morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee and Football, presented by Texas Electricity Ratings. I'm your host, Blake Monroe, where I'm joined this morning by Bobby Burton and Jerry Hamilton. Tell us where you're checking in from, what you're drinking. Obviously, we love to see that. And then, uh, guys, the team back out on the practice field today as we inch closer to that spring game. Unfortunately, no viewing window for the media. As you said, Bobby, you'd be there if that was the case. <laughs> but Sark is meeting with the media afterward. So what are we hoping to hear today? I think we want to hear about continued guys uh, going forward. You know, who, who has been making some uh, noise that maybe everybody's not talking about. Uh, but uh, really uh, just just asking what he's thinking of the team right now. You know, at this point last year, Sark really started talking about culture a lot. Uh, he did it before the season or before the spring ball. But in the middle of it, he really started leaning on that a little bit because he felt uh, some things were happening for him this year. I want to see if that's changed a little bit. You know what? What or what is changing? One of the things I'm concerned about. Last year we knew who the the leaders would be. Jerry, um, look, they had them all over the place, right? Now you know Quinn is one of the leaders, but who else on defense is actually stepping up? Is it David Benda who he sent out to the media the very first opportunity? Baron Sorrell, Jade Baron, Michael Taft, who I think is going to be one of them. Uh, you know, that that's kind of the next piece. Whenever you don't get to see practice, that's the things that you want to hear about uh, from the head coach. Yeah, no doubt. And I think Anthony Hill's going to get some mention there as well, especially after, you know, look, we talked to Coach De La Torre uh, a Sunday night Longhorn live stream. If you go back and watch that, the defensive coordinator, Denton Ryan, who uh, obviously has known Anthony, as he said, since seventh grade. Um, and I've talked to Coach, uh, I call him DLT, about um, – Anthony Hill a number of times. And, and, and the one thing that they always mentioned when I was by Denton Ryan was Anthony Hill wanted to be a leader. He, he embraced all of that uh, in the Denton Ryan program. I think Anthony Hill's on track to do that again. So I'm interested, interested to see, does he become that this year in year two? I don't think it's out of the question with him. I think he has a lot of those characteristics. Uh, but again, what does is Sark or is Sark and the staff ready for him to embrace that role on this team this year? Will be interesting to see. I think Kelvin Banks a little bit as well. Uh, by the way, yes, um, um, I, I, I I'm seeing the Caitlin Clark comments. Uh, I did watch that last night, and and you know, look, I mean, she's a generational talent. I'm I'm interested to see what the TV ratings are going to be for that game. I think they're going to be in the Final Four and women's side is going to be the highest it's ever been easily this weekend easily <laughs> highest it's ever been UConn looked good too by the way yep. for having five players out three starters yeah I mean they've had more injuries than and you can imagine on a 13 14 scholarship team this year the fact that he's back in the final four this year is kind of amazing I actually sent this to a but text group buddy this morning and, and I and it was just a little uh hoops trivia I mean, you realize Gino Auriemma has been to now 23 Final Fours, 14 in a row, 11 national championships, 27 seasons of 30 or more wins, and a combined 12 seasons of zero or one loss. I mean, you, you, you'll never see like a resume like that in college athletics ever again. That's just absolutely incredible. Um, and yeah, I, I do think... Caitlin, Caitlin Clark is, is a female, is the female Steph Curry. My son told me that a year ago, and I was like, yeah, okay, because I don't watch much of the women's game. Um, but then I started watching her. I was like, yeah, I mean, she actually really is. I mean, her average three-point make last night, I think, was 27 and a half feet. That's ridiculous. Yeah. By the way, I got I got uh, got to give a little praise to the Astros. Oh, my no gosh. Last night. Blanco with the no-hitter against the Blue Jays, I believe. Archmania, Astros, no-no. And, yes, it, hey, it was only his eighth start, I believe. Hey, well. another guy that they paid $5,000 for, by the way, in the international waivers and signed him late. Ends up being a player at age 30. Now, he pitched for him a little bit in relief last year. It had been a, a minor league guy for a long time. But the Astros are like with Framber Valdez, Luis Garcia. They, they, they are – they were – at least under their previous management. I'm a little concerned about their existing uh, management right now with uh, Dana Brown and their GM. But under Lunau, uh, they they could unearth some gems in, in uh, South America or in, 
uh, the, the Caribbean, South America. Dude, you got to bring up Colton's tweet. That's amazing from eight sixteen. I had no idea. I'm not. I, I haven't followed that uh, that closely. Wow. And they sent their best player down to minors. Like the MLB Players Association is about to be all over the Oakland A's. Soon. They said Ruiz went down, who I believe had the most impressive season for him uh, last year for. From what I understand, no reason. I don't. There's a reason they're the A's. I, so basically, 13 errors through the first five games. Y'all gonna talk? Y'all gonna uh, say what's being read? Uh, because we have so many people now joining us That's on true. Twitter. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, the video if you don't. If you get a chance or the uh, audio, uh, and uh, we'll get going. Hey Jerry, I want to I want to circle back to you because uh, it's also going to be a big recruiting weekend that Steve Sarkeesian and his group are getting ready for. Uh, right now, there's a couple of guys that you said you wanted to show some video of uh, this morning, as well as talk about and kind of introduce folks to. Uh, let's start with a young man out of Ruston, Louisiana, if you get a chance. Yeah, so uh, Aiden Anding uh, is a basketball player track guy that came back to football as a junior. Uh, he's from Ruston High in Louisiana. Texas offered him March 28th. Um, and they offered him – one, his tape's really good, obviously. He's a big-time athlete, one of the best basketball players uh, in North Louisiana. He has, he could be a legitimate D2, maybe lower D1 guy in basketball. He's long jumped 22-6 this year. Uh, but, look, he uh, he is an elite athlete, um, and that's showing up at corner now. Um, you know, and he was he, – his coming out party was the Under Armour All-America camp in Dallas, March 10th. Uh, he ran a 459 laser 40, a 412 laser shuttle. I'm, and the 459 people are like, that's it? Well, that's extremely fast for Under Armour camps. I was a part of those, still am, was a part of the Under Armour camp Houston this year. That's very fast on a laser start, laser finish 40. So, I mean, that, that's a – when you, once you start hitting in those four fives, there are a few guys, very few guys that run sub four five on laser, laser in high school. Kids don't know how to run the 40. Or they drive a long time, get out of the car, stretch, and go run a 40. So anytime you're under four six, it's impressive. Four run two laser shuttle. Uh, but Terry Joseph called and offered him March 28th. Uh, and he, was, uh, he, he spoke with Steve Sarkeesian and Terry Joseph last night. Um, for the first time, first conversation with Sark. So Texas is working on getting the campus. He's, he's scheduled to be at Arkansas today. He was at Miami last weekend. Uh, I think Texas will get him on campus in April. But again, look, this is recruiting to me, recruiting through the whistle, continued evaluation. This was a first-year football player at the high school level uh, last year. So his, his tape was slow to get out. Uh, but when you go to that Under Armour camp and put up those times, that he did at 5'11", 165, 167 in that area code. And then they turn on the tape. Uh, they see a guy that has a lot of upside. So this is a guy to watch for Texas. We'll see how hard a push they make on him. Uh, but again, the evaluation process continues. We're not even into the spring evaluation period yet. And Texas is Kenny Baker for sure uh, because he hasn't seen a lot of these guys. And Texas is going to make the most of this. Good stuff, Jerry. Yeah, nobody is. Aiden, Aiden Anding. Aiden Anding from Ruston, Louisiana. Nobody's favorite said his dad went to LSU, correct? Well, I know you have one other guy that you wanted to talk about too, Jerry. Then we'll get into the visitors. And can you tell us about him? Uh, you got to bring, bring that one up for me um, real quick. Bring up that huddle tape for me. There you go. Malik Autry, defensive tackle, committed to Auburn. Uh, he lives in the backfield. He's at Opelika. So let's start off with he's 30 inside 30 minutes away from the Auburn campus. He's committed to Auburn. But, again, Steve Sarkeesian spoke with Autry last night. Autry's scheduled to be in this weekend, April 6th. Uh, now, while he's committed to Auburn, and I do think it would be a tough flip, he's going to visit a lot of places. He's, he was at Florida last weekend. Uh, an official visit to Texas in June isn't out of the question. He's scheduled to be at USC in Oregon in June as well along with Auburn and Florida. So uh, Texas is making a run at these big-time guys on the defensive front in the southeast. And, it, it, look, it's a numbers game. You hope to get in on enough of these guys and get enough of these guys to campus to where you get three or four of the ones you really want and build out that defensive line class. But uh, Malik Autry is one of the best big jumbo athletes in the country playing on a defensive line, and he's scheduled to be in uh, this weekend, uh, Saturday, April 6th, for that big visit weekend. It's interesting because you add him along with Josiah Sharma 
and Brandon Brown, uh, who's already committed to Texas. Those are three big time out of state guys Texas seems to be targeting right now. Uh, there's some other guys that are possibilities, Jerry, uh, but their defensive line recruiting. I think it's, uh, you know, I, even though uh, Bo, Bo Davis kind of uh, is now at LSU, it seems like they're targeting and not saying, not taking no for an answer on some high end guys right now. Um, and I'm pretty impressed with what Kenny Baker has done thus far to get his name, to throw his hat in the ring, right. With some guys. Now we got to see exactly if he can domino, whether yeah. or not he can finish out the, the story, but they've done a good job getting in on good, on good players. Yeah. Really. And I mean, yesterday we put out that Zion Williams and his mom are expected in town this weekend. That's going to be an LSU, Texas battle. All right. Uh, girlfriend's going to go to LSU. I hear. So we'll, that, that'll be a battle for a while. Um, you know, uh, so we'll see what happens there. But look, Zion Williams and Malik Autry on campus. We can Chase Sims out of Richmond Randall, uh, the D lineman who uh, Texas offered in March. He said he's going to be in again. He kind of reiterated that this weekend on Saturday as well. So a number of D linemen uh, will be in town this weekend. And at the edge position, Hayden Lowe, uh, one of the very best. I think, uh, I think, uh, Blake, we have a list of, um, uh, some of the guys that look and the, uh, we have a list of guys scheduled to be in this weekend but at the same time look these lists are fluid it's tuesday there will be a guy or two drop off look Mateo, Matea Tangai we built this out yesterday he committed the USC obviously I still think he'll make his official visit to Texas the one thing about the kids committing the USC um, and I'm not going to name the player but one of the guys that committed the USC like very recently he's already lined up visits elsewhere so this recruiting process goes on uh, it will continue. Um, there you see DeCorey and Moore. He's, he's coming in this weekend and April 20th for the spring game. Uh, Ricky Stewart coming in this weekend. Obviously, the official visit June 14th, 16th. Same with Kelshawn Johnson. Uh, Hayden Lowe, remember that name at Edge. That's a guy that Texas really, really likes. That official visit list is packed. I mean, so he may not be ranked as one of the top two or three Edge prospects in the country, but if you follow his official visit list, the college coaches seem to think he is. I mean, you're talking Georgia, Texas, USC, and Oregon. He's out of Oaks Christian uh, it, it, there in Westlake Village. There's some college coaches that think he may be better than Kayvon Thibodeau long term. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying a couple of people I've talked to what they said. So Hayden Lowe, if you just look at national rankings, you may not find him in that top 20, but he's being recruited like he's one of those guys. Um, then obviously Cade Phillips from Hightower, Jonah Williams and Oklahoma Lean coming in. Uh, Elijah Barnes coming in this weekend from Skyline. Riley Pettage on schedule to be at USC this week in Texas, April 20th. Uh, but it's a big, big weekend at wide receiver to Corian Moore. Jamie French's first visit uh, to Texas from Mandarin High. He's also got that June 21st through 23rd OV. Then Kalik Lockett. Uh, and Nick Townsend's a name, I, you know, continues to grow on me. He put a 10 9 on the board at 215 pounds, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and this he's out. Is he out of spring or climb? He's out of the Caney High. I mean, it's you put a 10 9 on the board at over 200 pounds, and you're not going to get my attention once. You're going to get me to go visit the school two more times. Uh, this is what's going to happen on that one. So, uh, Nick Townsend, one of the best two way players in the country. Uh, rankings be damned. He is. Uh, he, he's just as good as an outside backer a, a, as well as tied in, but he wants to be recruited as tied in at, and, and Jeff Banks has been by that school twice and they're recruiting him as a tight end. Uh, so he's coming in this weekend. And again, I, I think he's going to continue to rise as these rankings all recalculate this spring and through next year. Uh, remember that name, Nick Townsend. Jerry, I, I see uh, Smith and Rogbo in here, uh, DJ Sanders, Tyler Thomas, offensive lineman out of Dickinson. Uh, and then Cade Phillips. Uh, what, where, uh, tell us a little bit about Cade Phillips, and then I had there's a question from the uh, from the comment box about uh, Jordan Davison, the running back out of Modern Day, yep. whether or not he's coming in Jordan, and where yeah. Texas sits. A lot of people are thinking Ohio State now might be the leader for him. But start yeah, so Jordan, Jordan Davison uh, should be coming in this weekend as well. Uh, again, that we built this list out, and we know it's going to be we have the full list at ontexasfootball.com. There's more names on that. Smith Arogbo's teammate, Ike Okafor, a D lineman, also coming in from Hastings, a guy that Texas monitors. 
continues to kind of watch. So there's going to be more names on that. Racing Guillory, the 2026 running back uh, committed to Texas from Alito. He's coming in this weekend. So that list is more than what we just showed on the graphic, but we wanted to give you an idea of the type of weekend it's going to be uh, for, for the Texas Longhorns. And by the way, I know somebody's going to ask, is Keelan Russell coming in this weekend? No. I asked him. He's coming in April 20th is when he's coming in. Uh, but yeah, Jordan Davidson is scheduled to be in this weekend uh, as well. So, uh, uh, you know, look, I, I know some people are uh, picking Ohio State for him now. I, I'm one that kind of lets all this thing, kind of this process continue on through uh, June when these official visits happen uh, and see where things end up. All right, y'all, before we move on, Bobby, I'm going to let you tell folks about today's sponsor, Texas Electricity Ratings. Yeah, I want Texas football uh, happy to sponsor, uh, happy to partner with Texas Electricity uh, Ratings. Uh, for those of y'all still living in Texas and in the major cities with deregulated electricity like Dallas and Houston, you understand that the deregulated electricity market can be confusing. Texas Electricity Ratings is a shopping website that lets you compare prices, read customer reviews, and find a good electricity plan that fits your needs. It also filters out a lot of the gimmicking plans on websites like power to choose that trick customers into expensive bills. So if you're in the market for a new electricity plan before this summer, uh, shop texaselectricityratings.com forward slash on Texas football or OTF for all your electricity needs and they want to say hook them to Longhorn Nation. We got a couple of super chats, Blake. We uh, we, we got to get Henry James out of the way because he always makes me laugh. Um, we, because I do have an answer for this one. Okay. Henry James, BC with the super chat. Thank you, Henry. He says, would Caitlin Clark start at quarterback? Look, it's a great hour. question. And while I don't have to read, I'm going to clean off my gooders while I answer this. Um, Look, she drew 56,000 for a basketball game in Iowa's football stadium this year. If you took away the Iowa defense and just said Iowa offense is having a spring practice or spring game, they wouldn't draw 56,000, I guarantee you that. <laughs> they might not dry, draw 6,000. Uh, do you enjoy watching paint dry when yeah. I think of the <laughs> Iowa offense? That's immediately what I think of. <laughs> oh man well we do have some more super chats you are correct but before we get to those and get to all of y'all's great questions and by the way plenty of time to get more questions in espn uh, their scout scene came out with some draft rankings here recently and i'm going to bring those up for everybody to see so we can discuss that and uh byron murphy at 20 mitchell at 23 worthy at 33 sweat 34 and brooks at 43 and remember, this isn't like a mock draft. They're not saying they're going to go in those spots. They're just ranking the prospects in the draft class. Yeah, but five in the top 43. You believe that, guys? That's how much has changed. Now, I'm going to give you some other ones, too. Uh, this Jerry and, and Blake, uh, and so everybody can hear them. Uh, this comes from Scouts, Inc., which does the, the scouting for ESPN. They actually rank the top 300 prospects in the NFL draft. So there's five for Texas, right? JT Sanders came in at number 67. This one surprised me. Offensive tackle Christian Jones came in at number 85. Awesome. That would make him a third-round pick up from six or seven if he would have left last year or undrafted free agent. Continued sign of development from the Longhorns, in my opinion. Uh, Jalen Ford at 140. Ryan Watts, 224. Jordan Whittington, 256. And then Keelan Robinson sneaks in at 286. So, look, all told, 11 players in the top 300 in the country uh, for the University of Texas. Uh, that's good stuff for UT. Any of these, though, this top five surprise you, Jerry or Blake? Um, No, no, not really. I think it uh, speaks to with Jonathan Brooks with an ACL. It speaks to that. Not, and this has nothing to do with Jonathan Brooks if he's healthy. How how weak of a running back draft it is yes. for me. I mean, that's the one thing that stands out, and how big time of a wide receiver draft it is. Uh, but look, I mean, we kind I jokingly said it yesterday, but I mean, golly, I mean, if you're AD Mitchell or Xavier Worthy, I mean, Kansas City looking good. They they're gonna have to draft the wide out. So uh, just stay on your straight and narrow here for about three weeks, guys, and. <laughs> Give yourself a chance to be that 30-second pick 
uh, because I think Kansas City's going to need a little help, even though they got Marquise Hollywood Brown. Uh, but, you know, look, I think it'll be interesting to me. Um, I, I'm really interested to see, does A.D. Mitchell or Worthy go higher in this draft? Uh, Bobby, that stands out to me because it, it comes down to obviously what type of need you have at receiver, what you're looking for in your scheme, on your team. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to imagine. Like in talking to people, there's a lot of people that think if, if Worthy's on the board, Casey will go that direction at, at 32. But now I say this, but where things change is if Kansas City does not sure about uh, the future of Rice, does that make A.D. Mitchell look better for them at 32 since they just signed Hollywood Brown? I think Mitchell is going to go first. The, 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 the general consensus is that Mitchell, A.D. Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell will go ahead of Xavier Worthy. Uh, how much higher is, is different. I will add this. It's it's interesting because some uh, some uh, NFL teams, they don't mind playing with smaller players, okay? If you can stretch the field vertically, horizontally, however, right? But got to be honest, the Baltimore Ravens aren't taking Xavier Worthy. They need guys that can also block a little bit because they got Lamar Jackson out there, Yeah. right? They need guys that can help them be a little bit more ball control at times and improve them in that capacity. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, Xavier Worthy does not fit every team. Would he fit the Kansas City Chiefs? Without question. The other issue is Adonai Mitchell likely fits every single team, right? That makes him more of a more opportunity to get picked uh, quicker. Um and, and by the way, I'm going to say this about the Chiefs, too, but before we go. Everybody's pinpointing the Chiefs and Xavier Worthy. They get a lot of their speed guys late. They do, like Isaiah Pacheco was either late seventh round or undrafted free agent. Tyreek Hill was third or fourth round. They don't do a lot of speed guys early. They go for, they typically go uh, for bigger guys, offense, defense line, that kind of stuff. Uh, because they, they've been picking late so much lately, too, by the way. Uh, but so I would be surprised. I know people are trying to pinpoint that, but I actually would bet against that um, simply because uh, the Chiefs tend uh, to, to try to get those speed guys that are underappreciated in the late rounds. Like I could see Keelan Robinson going late to Kansas City or being an undrafted free agent because he has that kind of that quick speed stuff that they like that they think they can get uh, at, a, at a cheaper price, essentially. Uh, by the way, uh, on those rankings, again, that's not like projected draft. That's just where right. they're ranked as prospects. Uh, I talked to somebody who's very close to that, the Murphy and Sweat um, uh, pro workouts and getting ready for the draft uh, on Monday, and they expect Byron Murphy to go in the top 15 still. Wow. Let me, let me ask you all a question. Now that we're through the combine or through the pro day, who do you think has helped their draft stock the most? And who do you think has hurt their draft stock the most? I think the hurt is pretty easy for me. I think it's – I Bobby, it, despite what he does on the field, I think JT Sanders' workout may drop him a little bit. And, you know, it kind of goes back – And not the, not the workout, but the the testing part the of testing. the Yeah, yeah, yeah. The testing. The workout was great. The yeah, testing. The, te- the testing part of the workout. Um, and it – you know, look, again, Aaron De La Torre, the D.C. at Denton Ryan, who had J.T. Sanders for years, says, you know, when the game starts, he's he's just a tremendous football player. And, and that is 100 percent true. Um, but there's going to be look, the NFL's looking for warts. That's all this is at this point. They've watched these guys play plenty. They're looking for warts now. I mean, I mean, just go back to NBA or NFL drafts. Remember, Kevin Durant couldn't bench 185 pounds. Derek Johnson wasn't physical enough to play in the box coming out of college. I mean. He's gonna be he's a maybe Hall of Fame player. Kevin Durant's a what a top 20 player in the history of the in the world of basketball, right? But he couldn't bench 185 pounds. These guys are looking for warts. So JT Sanders, eight reps, JT Sanders 29 vertical. Those things are good, those are warts for him. So does that mean you drop five, 10, 15, 20 spots at the end of the day? Quite possibly. Is that the way it should go? I'm not saying that's the way it should go. We're just talking about the process itself. Watch for the Dolphins with JT Sanders. Just going to tell yep. you. Because they, they need somebody. They, they've they already got people that can spread it. Okay? They need somebody uh, that can be a, a, a definite outlet 
underneath for uh, Tua Tagovailoa. All right, hey, I want to I want to add this. You said most disappointing. I actually would say it's a little bit different, uh, Jerry. I would go with Jordan Whittington, and it's it's not that he's done anything. It's just his stock has dropped because he hasn't been able to do anything really. Mm -hmm. um, he hasn't worked out. I mean, he did a little bit. Of, he did like a half workout at Texas, but he hasn't been able to truly uh, spread their spread his wings a little bit. As far as who's done the most for themselves, even with even with Xavier, Xavier Worthy popping off and running the four two one. Okay, even with that, I have to say that it's either Christian Jones, yeah, or Ryan Watts. Yeah, I go okay. Christian Jones. Yeah, Christian Jones has moved up from a I mean, look, a lot of people had him fifth, sixth, seventh round. And now he's, I mean, look, if you believe Scout Sink, he's in the top three rounds. So the big offensive tackle out of Houston uh there. And then Ryan Watts out of Little Elm, all he's done since getting healthy is impress people. Whether is at the uh, I think the Shrine game uh, that he was at, at in uh, uh, over there, or in the workout at Texas, all he's done or at the combine is impress people, Jerry. I, I mean, I think about this on Christian Jones, and it's twofold. There's somebody's uh, Zane Petty says from the tape, but it's also because at Senior Bowl he proved he could play guard physically hold up as guard at the NFL level. I think that was big for him. Bobby kind of talked about that. But just think about how much money Christian Jones made himself if he goes in the third round. Um, the first pick of the third round will sign a contract worth approximately $5.85 million with a signing bonus of $1.26. So it's going to go down from there. And then if you look at the sixth round draft pick numbers, I mean, if Christian Jones goes from a sixth round to a third round, Good for him. I mean, he just he made life, life, life changing money within a two month period of time. Good for completely, him. Completely agree and happy for him. Yeah. Hey, uh, we we neglected to mention something out of the gate, Jerry, that we should. Uh, Texas, uh, uh, you know, Eddie Reese has been a, an institution, yeah. at the University of Texas, for fifty years. Basically, I think he won forty five consecutive. Uh, Big 12 slash Southwest Conference Championships as head of the Texas men's swimming and diving program. He tried to retire two years ago. They couldn't find an adequate replacement. So he came back after about a month of being retired, uh, of course, continued his winning ways. Uh, the Longhorns yesterday named Bob Bowman, the new head uh, swimming and diving coach of the men's and as director of swimming and diving overall. They'll keep the same women's coach, um, uh, Melissa Capitani, uh, led the women's to uh, the second place national finish. Uh, she'll stay on. But Bob Bowman, interesting thing here, he helped Arizona State to the national title on, I think it was Saturday. And now he's the Texas head, uh, new Texas head coach on Monday. Um, Bowman has also had a success. He was also previously the swim and dive coach at Michigan, uh, but he really got known for being the head coach of one Michael Phelps. Well, my question, my question is: so swimming isn't like publicized, right? Yep. So, did do we know did Del Conte hand him the national championship trophy, then put him on a plane right after that? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So does anybody have like video or photos of him actually being handed the national title trophy by someone other than Chris Del Conte? <laughs> it's a, that's a fair question. It is that's clear. a pretty quick turnaround. From listening to uh, some things behind the scenes, as well as the, the press release they put out, it's clear that this this was getting done come heck or high water for yeah. Texas. This is the guy they kind of um, uh, zoned in on or zeroed in on, uh, and they got him to the University of Texas. Yet another feather in the cap of an athletic department right now uh, that's running on hot. You know, they're, they're yeah, man. I mean, look, lot I mean we, right we know that somebody of <laughs> Sark after dark has said, matching the baseball higher CDC. Like, I was going to make a joke. Clemson fans better be on alert over there. Um, but, uh, you know, so sorry, CDC, if he makes a change, can come in and just take a coach, and you never knew it until the press conference happens. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a hellacious hire by CDC in Texas. Yeah. 
All right, y'all. Well, like I said, we got super chats to get to. We got plenty of questions to get to, plenty of time to get your questions in if you haven't asked already. But first, let's talk about one of our other sponsors real quick, guys, and that is Autograph, who's one of our newer ones. Bobby? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, big news for the Longhorn fans. We're excited to be working with Autograph, co-founded by Tom Brady, the former football player, uh, considered the GOAT by many. Autograph is where real Texas fans get unreal rewards. It's the first app to track and reward fans for loving what they love most, turning passion into access and experiences founded on the belief that devotion should be rewarded and the future of fandom belongs to the fans. They've been sending true fans to the biggest games in college basketball for just $16. Yes, $16. As we gear up for football season, this means you can score discounted tickets to marquee matchups. Scan to download the free autograph app in the Apple App Store and use referral code on Texas. That's referral code on Texas and see where fandom takes you. Hey, hey Blake, we had a question here. A director's Cup standings looking like. Is there a. Um, yeah, is let there me. Uh, I'll start. Let me find those. And in the meantime, I will get to one of these super chats and then I'll circle back to that after the super chat and see what I can find. Uh, we'll go to Jay Lee's super chat. Thank you, Jay. Let's say no ma major injury at any crucial position, but we end up underperforming this season, eight and four. What could end up being some of the reasons? Ooh, man. Uh, turnovers. Uh, turnovers would be one of them. Uh, key injuries would be one of them. Um, I, well, you're saying no major injury. Uh, increased, uh, so I was actually, a guy sent me a private message yesterday and asked me, why am I so high or kind of doubted that the SEC was a big step up in talent slash competition for the Longhorns going from the big 12. And in many ways he's right. I mean, look, the offenses are just different. Okay. They, they are, they are positioned differently. It's the defenses in the SEC because they almost all have some level of elite player, whether it's at, in the secondary, at linebacker, at defensive line. I mean, you think about all the – like you could say, hey, Mississippi State is not a great program, right? But you go back and you think of all the guys that have come through that program. A Dak Prescott was a quarterback there. Christian Jones. They've had guys – coming out the woodworks that are great players. They haven't necessarily been great teams, though. And yet Mississippi State is considered one of the worst teams in, that Texas will play from the SEC this year. Okay? That's the point, is even the lower-end teams in the SEC can bite you. You know, they can, you're, not, you're likely not going to get stung too often uh, by some teams in the, in the Big 12 if you're a good team yourself. There's more teams that kind of can make it difficult for you in the SEC. That's that's my takeaway. Now, granted, if you're not very good, like Texas was it in the 2010s, then any team can bite you. Um, but Texas is is has upped their level, in my opinion, and so eight and four would be a disappointment. But how does that happen with no major injuries? I you know. I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you. I think turnovers would have would be a big play a big role. Maybe a kick return, punt return that changes the game. That's another thing. I mean, these guys all have punt returners that have have a chance to play in the NFL. People don't appreciate that, but it, it's true. All right. I was just looking. Um, oh, go ahead, Jerry. I mean, nine nine of your top 20, 25 teams that have the most players in the NFL right now, nine of the top 25 are SEC. So, I mean, that's – and you add Oklahoma and Texas into that list, you're, you're over 40% uh, of your uh, teams. And that doesn't even count Mississippi State, who I think was 26 on that list. So, uh, there's just – there's so much talent in the league. I, I think the one thing it does is it, it wears on you physically a little bit more. Yeah, that's one thing it does. It wears on you physically a little bit more uh, than than the Big Twelve would, and that doesn't. I'm not talking about a a non contact knee injury. I'm talking about week in week out physicality. But here's the question I have with this, guys. I think Texas and OU are coming into the SEC at the perfect time because of this. You now have two weeks off during the season, not one. 
that helps you in the SEC week to week. I, I really think that's not going to be talked about enough at it in the season, but it's going to be major moving forward. Back, back when you had one off week and you played an SEC physical schedule, that's one thing. But now you have two off weeks. You have two weeks to get healthy during the season the best you can and get rest. I do think that helps the Texas and Oklahoma transitioning into the SEC. Now we're going to circle back around to that Director's Cup here. Um, and so I couldn't find anything definitive yet. Uh, Bobby, you'll have to help. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. Brett, been on- was it Brett, Brett's his first name. I can't remember his last name. But he so, does Director's Cup. We've had him on the show a couple times. We'll have him back uh, soon. Uh, as soon as the women's basketball and men's basketball tournaments are over to get an update. Yeah. So here's what he is most recent and Stanford always the, uh, you know, one that Texas competes with the most in the director's cup. So they played 10 sports uh, that they both participate in. In those 10 sports, Texas has six, uh, 674 and a half with basketball still playing. Obviously this is a tweet from a few days ago. And then Stanford was at 543 but he also posted this one. He said it was a huge weekend for North Carolina State as they scored top 10 finishes in men and women's swimming as well as both of their teams advancing to the final wow. four. Before last weekend, they were ranked 36, and now they sit in seventh place, up to 34 points still in play for their basketball team. So he did say on his Twitter that he will have an update um, at once all the Elite Eight stuff finished. So I would expect that to be posted in the next day or two. And once once he does post that, we'll have to talk about it for sure. I got all I got to say to that is eat your heart out, AM fans. <laughs> North Carolina's little brother's doing better than you are as a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jerry Hamilton. Talking about the Tuesday morning. Up, NC State stepping their game up. Little brother. Little brother <laughs> East. Yes, Mac Brown have to say over in, hey, what does Mac Brown have to say over in North Carolina about that? Yeah, at NC State's getting to have a great year. Very good kids. Great smiles. <laughs> great smiles. <laughs> oh man! All right, guys. <laughs> we got we got some more super chats that we need to get to and knock out. So this uh, next one is also from Jay Lee. Thank you again, Jay. He says, "Has Lincoln decided he's willing to do anything and open up the checkbook to get the guys he needs? Has two of the best guys in Georgia for the class of 2025 already?" Bobby, you got a thought on that one? <laughs> yeah, you and I were so Jim, this is the five to ten minute. Jerry and I have a five to ten minute discussion prior to every uh morning's coffee and football. And this was exactly our discussion point today. Is USC opening up the purse strings early compared to other teams? The answer is unequivocally yes, they are. Um, it, it, it would appear so because they are on recruiting fire right now. The problem is, as Jerry has mentioned, already a couple of these elite guys are saying they're going to visit elsewhere. Yes. Which means they're going shopping a little bit. (laughs) And so how much value does that really have? Um, So are teams getting caught by surprise by what USC is doing? And and I'm not talking about Texas. I'm talking about the world because it's not just Texas that they're recruiting against. And the answer is yes, but how much does it matter when signing day is still nine months away or six months away? Um, and so I'm I'm of the opinion, Jerry, for you and me uh, to talk about it is, look, they're trying to do something different. That's great. Okay. They're trying to overcome a down year from Lincoln Riley. Um, and they, they went out and hired a new defensive coordinator. A lot of these guys are defensive players that they're taking early, right? You mentioned the linebacker out of California uh, that has committed to them. I don't know what's going to happen out of this. This is a new tactic, and we haven't seen the actual results yet. And we won't actually be able to gauge whether it was successful or not, Jerry, until December, in my opinion. Because guess what? If they get eight or nine elite guys and six of them peel off, by September, that wasn't successful, my man. It's it still wins for them. <laughs> it made, well, it made good headlines in April, yeah. right? But it didn't make good headlines come uh, come December when it really counted. 
By the way, I, I think uh, USC is a little back to the wall. I mean, look, I think they made a really good hire at D.C. And I think that D-line coach, I mean, anytime you're a D-line coach and say, I was an Aaron Donald's handpicked guy, I mean, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good recruiting pitch, right? Obviously, NIL is a major factor. Um, but, uh, you know, look, the, you look at an Isaiah Gibson, a kid out of Warner Robins who committed the USC. I, yeah, he's scheduled to be at some other places um, already. Uh, if Georgia really, really wants that guy, USC has a fight on their hands at the end of the day. But I also think it's smart to try to get guys in the fold if you're USC. Well, what else are they going to do? Because they're not going to have – it's unlikely that they're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of movement late. Yeah. To be honest, they don't, they're not going to have a great team this year, they don't think. Uh, we've had a couple of questions, by the way, about Michael Fasusi. He's going to visit April 9th. He wasn't on that April 6th visit. He's coming in April 9th with his family. A lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the entire Texas staff. I, I think that thing remains the same. I think Texas and Oklahoma are battling it out. I think A&M's trying to get into uh, really that end of the end of the uh, recruitment uh, decision. Uh, but I think Texas and Oklahoma have been the top two for a long time in that. And I, I think they both have confidence. Somebody's asking, does USC, Horn 7, does USC win the Big Ten? I would give them less than a 5% chance of winning the Big Ten. They just don't have the talent. They, they, they're behind Ohio State, Michigan. They're behind Penn State. Oregon. Oregon. They, they didn't win the big the Pac-12. I mean, and they're losing their best player. I mean, look, I, I'm not, not so sure Lincoln Riley's got it, got it all figured out right now. It took him, what, eight years to figure out he had the wrong defensive coordinator? Yep. All so, right. we'll see. Well, you're watching Coffee and Football presented by Texas Electricity Ratings. Scott, so we've had a lot of people joining us both on YouTube and Twitter watching live since we first started. So, let's rehash everything. Texas, of course, back on the practice field today. Unfortunately, no media viewing window, but Sark will have the press conference afterwards. Bobby, what time? I think that's going to be around 11 or so. It'll be around 11. CJ uh, CJ Vogel. I said CJ Lacey instead of KJ Lacey. CJ Vogel, our CJ Vogel of On Texas Football will be there for us. Uh, and then also uh, right after that, the new swimming and diving coach will also be available for a media opportunity. I think CJ is going to stick around for that just to see if he has any Thing interesting to say, but uh, Sark will go to the podium around 11 today after the seventh practice uh, for the Longhorns, nearing the midway point. Uh, Longhorns allowed 15 total practices in spring ball. This is number seven. Uh, Thursday will be eight. Uh, I, I'm hearing right now, guys, and Jerry, uh, you know this, I'm hearing that there might be a scrimmage on Saturday uh, during uh, when all of these April 6th recruiting visitors are going to be around. So that will be fun to watch Quinn Ewers, those guys, as well as Arch Manning, uh, go at it for uh, these recruits. So hopefully uh, Texas will put on a good show. I, I can say this, that and that sets up because last Friday's practice was said to be the most physical Texas has had of the spring. Yep. Um, and by the way, we heard Cedric Baxter had a very good uh, practice. Two What's different sort. Two different sources said that on, on said Baxter. Very much a live scrimmage of contact with what we were – uh, told so uh we have the uh, question about inside defensive line uh that we need i want to address too by the way um so i i do think saturday will probably be a scrimmage um He's on 854 my... yep all right so he only free only 93 daily interior defensive line question when the second portal window opens is sark looking for more depth similar to trill carter last season or is he looking for bona fide starters to replace the likes of sweat and murph both I don't look. I think he wants a bona fide starter slash NFL draft pick. That's what he wants, um, and I think he wants two of them if he can get them. I don't know if he can get them. We don't know who's going in yet, quite for sure. Okay, there's been some rumblings, but nothing definitive. Uh, as far as Trill Carter, he's a lot like Tia Savea. I think a little bit of an improvement. They think. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so they've done that. The problem is they don't have Murphy and Sweat, so they don't have the frontline guys. Alfred Collins is, would would be in that category. I think Vernon Broughton is trying, but I don't know that Vernon Broughton's ever going to get drafted in the NFL. 
Um, just to give you an, a sense. I mean, I know people are saying, well, we didn't think this highly of Murphy and Sweat last year until they started playing. It's not the, it's not a similar situation, guys. And people are trying to, to draw parallels, and they, it's just not accurate. Um, Aaron Bryant is, is a good player. He's an okay player, but he wouldn't be considered a plus player for Texas as a backup. Jure Bledsoe might be, if anybody had the ability to actually make a huge step, it's Alfred Collins and Jure Bledsoe, followed by Sadir Mitchell and Alex January. Those are the guys that have uh, either elite traits, in my opinion, or elite ability. Now, Sadir Mitchell clearly is, is behind the, the eight ball right now, based on some things. But the other guys, those are the ones that have that NFL raw talent, in my opinion, that you're waiting on. But January is a young player already. You got to remember that Mitchell hasn't really done anything and has actually been passed by January. So took, take those two off. And really, you're going in with Collins, who has that le elite level ability, and Bledsoe, who has elite level ability. Broughton, Aaron Bryant, Savea, I think they're more guys. I'm not sure they have what I would call elite, elite ability. Makes sense. All right, we have a couple more Super Chats that we need to get to. This first one here from Trey Day. He says, Jerry, who really pays for all these unofficial visits? I find it hard to believe that parents are paying. Y'all have tough questions today. <laughs> that parents are paying for all this travel, airfare, and hotels. I'm just going to, Bobby, you want to, I'm reading my lawnmower read for next week. <laughs> you, man, you're giving me all the standards of girl and grooming for next uh, week. Look, here, here's, here's the reality of it, Trey. <laughs> Um, that there is, uh, there is a rule that states that all the players have to do is do their, handle their own travel, their parents, et cetera, for unofficial visits. Um, if you, that one of the reasons we will find out all these visits so early is because these kids will go and buy their tickets <laughs> two months ahead of time to get the cheapest tickets. So that's number one. So they do actually do this. The second part of it is a lot of them see it as an investment in themselves because NIL is a real thing. So you may have to spend $1,000, $2,000 on the front end if you think there's going to be an NIL payoff on the back end by going to one of these schools, right? And that, that's just the reality of it these days. Uh, but Texas does not pay for a, a recruit's uh, visit, unofficial, official they do pay for official visits. They don't pay for unofficial visits. Uh, what do other teams do? I can't speak to that. I, I can't speak to that. Okay, y'all. Then one more super chat. They won't be caught up on that front. And this is a comment from Antonio Harris. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you guys for everyday content. That winning drive with CJ, Rod, and Coach is like kicking it at the barber shop, talking trash. Thanks again, and hook them. Thank you, Antonio. We're glad people like the, uh, the uh, winning drive. Every Mondays and Thursdays, C.J. Vogel, uh, along with Rod Babers and Coach Bob Shipley, the dad of Jordan and Jackson, uh, join us. And uh, I tell you what, Bob Shipley is a treasure uh, of people, uh, as is Rod. And C.J. just does a tremendous job uh, covering the team as well. Uh, somebody's asked again about Jordan Davis in Ohio State. I, for me, I'm just letting this process play out a little bit. He's scheduled to... Uh, uh, be at Texas this weekend. So let, let's see how things play out here over the next two or three months. And uh, we get Ivory Martin is Texas still communicating with the Forney running back 2026, Javian Osborne. He was at practice Friday. He was one of the uh, prospects that was on campus last Friday, uh, along with uh, Kobe Sellers, Josiah Sharman, uh, Dalen McCutcheon, a 2026 Jalen Pyle out of the Dallas area. Uh, so there was a uh, there was a few guys on campus, and he was one of those. JV and Osborne from Forney. Okay, and Bobby, if you're ready, can you tell us about autograph one last time? Yes, I can. Thank you for for waiting. I mean, I'd take a phone call real quick there. Uh, all, all right, everybody, uh, we're right in the thick of March Madness, which means the tournament is upon us, and spring football is here, as you all know. Now, let's be real. How many hours do you spend watching, reading, and listening? our coverage of the Longhorns, think about that for a second, and then ask yourself, what if there was a way to get rewarded for doing it? I mean, there are hundreds of credit card and airline points programs 
But what if there was one where you could get points for showing your Texas fandom? Now, let's take that out a step further. Further, What if these points you earn for being a fan unlock rewards like tickets to big games? Uh, if that sounds even remotely appealing, then you have to join us on the Autograph app. The Texas community on the Autograph app has all of your favorite Longhorn coverage all in one place, making it easier than ever to stay on top of everything. Plus, each time you read, watch, listen, and share your favorite content on the app, you earn fan coins, which can be used to unlock exclusive rewards at prices not found anywhere else. Scan to download the free autograph app in the Apple App Store and use referral code on Texas. That's referral code on Texas. Join us and see where your fandom takes you. Hey, uh, we got a little uh, a little breaking recruiting news. Not mi- minor stuff, but interesting stuff. Bring back up Aiden Andings Huddle if oh, you can. No. Like, sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah, I, I, I literally just closed it out while Bobby was Dad reading it. Read. Dad <laughs> gum it in my country coach's voice. Um, so look, Aiden Anding, the corner from Ruston, we were talking about earlier in the show that Texas offered March 28th. There he is. About to jump up and make that interception on his huddle. You can see about 100 made three-pointers this year, too, if you like that stuff, um, and a few dunks. Uh, but he, Aiden Anding, I told you he spoke with Sark and Terry Joseph last night. This was his first conversation with Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, he, Aiden just texted me and said he's going to visit April 6th. So we put up the April 6th list earlier. Uh, so a little live news when recruiting how this goes sometimes. Aiden Anding, the corner from Ruston, will be making his first visit ever to Texas April 6th. And that's the big weekend uh, this Saturday, which we think will be around a uh, scrimmage for the University of Texas. So uh, chalk up another really good athlete coming to town Saturday. I love how they recruit, dude. I love how Steve Sarkeesian and his team recruit. I just – it gets to my bones, man. I, I've been doing this 30 years. I mean, Jerry, I've been doing it 30 years. And you and I know real – we know the real thing versus the the pretenders. You yeah. know what I mean? Getting a guy like that who's a first year football player, but excellent basketball player, you see him make plays like that. I mean, that's what it takes. That yeah. that's exactly what it takes. You have to and, be, that, and that's why the willing to go the extra mile in recruiting yeah. and evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. That's why I don't have any problem with right. him waiting until April, May, June yeah. after they get a chance to go see the guys again. As long as he ends up with the guys by December, that is all that matters. Yeah, that's right. So, I, I just, I, like I said, I, lo- I love it in my bones. Uh, Ryan Nelson asked if I'm going to the command center. I actually will be in the command center about 11 today. I'm, I'm going to be heading off on the road here for a couple of days, and we'll have some good stuff for you. Is for the you command guys. center your car? Is that Yes, <laughs> apparently. I didn't nickname it. That, so that Somebody else did. But it, it, I know what he's talking about. Yes, it's uh, – we're going to be hitting the road for a couple of days uh, to go see some kids. We'll have more about that this week. All right, guys, let's get to some more questions here. And we're going to start with this one from Antoine. He says, any Stro or Niblet updates? Do you think Kobe and Wardell play special teams this year? Uh, Stroh's, I hear Stroh's having a really good spring. I mean, uh, backup uh, right guard. Um, I, I've heard he's continues. Uh, he's one of the strongest guys in the program. Uh, I, I've heard he continues to perform well. And Ryan Nelson had a comment earlier that the Christian Jones uh, draft stock and the process and the development, and his quote was so true, is if that can't convince, convince the younger offensive linemen to buy in to the development process and stay at Texas, um, no, what what else can? And that's so uh, so true. Yeah, yeah. The lawnmower 5.0 makes the road trip every time. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> Petronic says, with that manscaper riding shotgun, it's the <laughs> mobile commando center. By the way, Gary Hamilton. <laughs> Oh, all right, guys. <laughs> Next question here from more uh from EKM morning from Rockford, Illinois. Outside of sacking the QB more, what else do you want to see more of from the team this season? Um, I I would like to see maybe um, uh, more of uh, better secondary play. Typically, um, I think that's one of the things they're working on. Uh, playing a little tighter coverage on the outside. Uh, I think everybody 
sits back and thinks about, you know, third and five and playing seven yards off the ball, uh, right? Red zone, Colton says less field goals. How about better red zone performance? I would agree with that. Uh, maybe creating more turnovers. All of these things that you'd like to see, uh, Ekim. Uh, I would go, I guess if I had to say one thing, it'd be coverage. Um, I, I think that Texas did a good job, in my opinion, in, in that regard last year, but they could have done a little bit better earlier in the season. I think playing off so early in the season for so long uh, really caused me to, to have a little bit of a uh, PTSD whenever I saw third and six, you know. Um, so that that would be one, even though they they end up having good good stuff. But uh, I outside of uh, getting the quarterback on the ground uh, on pass rush, I really think it's going to be uh, outside on the corners and the safeties not not playing seven yards off. Hey, by the way, one of the uh, uh, comments was few rotations on the what it's going to be so interesting. One of the things that Sark said that struck uh, with me was at his February signing day press conference, which Texas didn't sign him on the high school ranks, right? So it was more of a the guys in the portal and everything else. But one of the things Sark said that really struck a chord with me in that press conference was going to a 12-team playoff, eventually a 14- and 16-team playoff, um, the need to play even more players, to play young players more to get guys ready to get through a longer season in a sport that does have injuries. So I'm almost expecting more rotation this season. I mean, if you're a team that believes we're, we're a playoff caliber team um, and we're, we're, we may have an extra game or two on our schedule, what Sark said was so interesting to me. That almost kind of was glaring lights that expect more of the same or even more than what you've seen from Texas to, to date as far as substitutions and rotation? Well, you, if they asked about uh, Kobe Black and Wardell Mack on uh, special teams, I definitely think you'll see them both on special teams. Um, to, yes. to that question, I I don't think there's any doubt. Um, now, you know, Black has more of a physical nature to him, so I think he fits more in that category. But I don't think they're going to not play Wardell Mack uh, as well. I, that, that's what you get these guys for. You try to indoctrinate them a little bit, like you did with Trey Wisner, Leonga LaFowle last year, right? All Both yep. of those guys had really good years on, on uh, kick coverage, in, in my opinion. So, uh, And now Wisner's expected to be one of the one of the gunners, if not the primary. So uh, Warren Roberson on kick on, on kick stuff. I, I, there's going to be a lot of guys like that. Hey, 908, Tong Vu has a good question, and I think we need to address it. That's a great question. Um, all right. So Tom Vu says, what makes recruiting right now feel more exciting than it did when Herman was landing top five classes from 2018 to 2020? Bobby? Bobby, I'll, I'll let you go, and then I'll, I'll go. I'll, I'll say right now, because the proof is in the pudding. You can land top five classes, but when half of them leave after the first year, I mean, that's the attrition in those classes. Go back and look at them. Within, I mean... Brew McCoy lasted three months, guys. I mean, half the players lasted a year. That's the difference. I mean, these guys, too many guys didn't want to play for Herman. I'll just be honest. I mean, you got guys that, that are NFL players at played at Texas, proud Longhorns, that were like, this guy's just a jack leg. I mean, and telling other uh, players not to play there. And that was that was causing other kids to leave early. Um, the reality. I'll say this too: much better balance in the recruiting class. Somebody made a joke: more offensive linemen and receivers. There's one. <laughs> um, but look, it, it, that's it: the balance in the classes to elevating every position. Texas has more depth than they have in uh, 15, 20, 20 years at this point. Bobby, we're getting into that area. The other thing is, I, one thing I firmly believe in college sports now, um, and you can be an a-hole, but you better be a genuine one. It, gen, being genuine, it, there's never been more important as a coach and a staff in recruiting in college athletics. And I'm talking all sports than it is today. Because the one thing about it is every, every kid and every family can go to YouTube and social media and they can find every interview, Coach Sark, uh, Kalen DeBoer, whoever, 
has ever done that's on YouTube now. And they can see how questions were answered in the past. They can see how questions were answered even a few months ago. You have to be very genuine now. You aren't fooling people. If you're fake, it's going to catch up with you. And you can, being genuine in recruiting and on it with a team has never been more important than it is now. It's a quality coaches must have. And I actually think that's one of Sark's strengths. Good stuff, guys, for sure. All right, Bobby, one more time. Tell us about Texas Electricity Ratings. Yeah, I really appreciate the the, the folks at Texas Electricity Ratings. Uh, we've been working with them now uh, for three months and uh, just tremendous people there. Uh, we appreciate their sponsorship and partnership with On Texas Football. Uh, for anyone shopping for electricity in the deregulated areas of Texas, TexasElectricityRatings.com is the best place to find a great electricity plan for your household. For starters, it filters out the dangerous and gimmicky plans from providers that are all hat and no cattle when it comes to your monthly bill. You can shop by rate, but also by an average bill feature that actually takes into account seasonal usage to give you a real number and not some placeholder. So if you're looking for a new electricity plan, check out TexasElectricityRatings.com forward slash OTF for the best options available. Hook them. Hey, guys, I've got to get out of here a little bit early today. Jerry and Blake are going to take you all the rest of the way. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Uh, Jerry, keep talking a little bit about that April 6th weekend because I do believe it's going to be a big uh, recruiting weekend for the Longhorns. Yeah, yeah. Blake, I don't know if we can bring that back up. Just talk yeah. a little bit about that on our way out of here in the next three or four minutes. And I agree, Dan Hurley is a stud, whoever's saying that. I think he does the best job. Um, in college basketball, of constructing a roster the right way to have sustained success in college basketball. And he's a really good coach. And having his dad in his ear is, is a great thing, too. Uh, but that 4-6 visitors list, some of this, you know, a couple of these names could change. There could be a couple of additions. There's more at ontexasfootball.com, more of that list. Um, and we'll grow that out. C.J. Vogel and I will grow that out the rest of the week. Um, I mean, we just added a Nanning to that list. We're literally on air during the show. Uh, so the list is going to continue to grow, but Zion Williams and his mom, that was a big one. We uh, broke that news yesterday. DJ Sanders from Belleville. Somebody asked a question earlier, and I can't get to all the questions when you answer, ask them, but I do try to remember them. Uh, DJ Sanders, I think it's A&M or Texas for him at the end of the day. I think there's more connections A&M, but look, coming in this weekend, um, is scheduled to be in June 21st through 23rd. He'll visit A&M officially as well. So that's one of those in-state battles. Um, but a great list of guys coming in this weekend. The receivers, I mean, in, it's going to be amazing to look at the receivers there, just how much speed is going to be standing next to each other. If there's ever a time where Decorian Moore, uh, Kelshawn Johnson, Jamie French, and, 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 and Lockett are standing next to each other, those four guys alone, man, that's unbelievable talent on the campus at, uh, for a visit at one position. But uh, Texas, I think they'll, it'll, they'll end up with over 20 combined four-star and five-star prospects in the 25 and 26 classes uh, in Austin Saturday for a spring practice and a visit. Man, that's crazy. Big weekend ahead, Jerry Hamilton, no doubt about that. And uh, let's do two or three more recruiting-related questions, and then we'll get out of here. Zane Petty, what would beating Georgia do for our recruiting? I think it would be, be huge, just, you know, just like uh, Alabama last year. That one would register – so much like the Alabama game last year. The thing when we go back and look at Texas win in Alabama last year, that was a huge visit weekend for Alabama. They put a lot into it. Why wouldn't they? Texas was coming to town's atmosphere is off the chain, off the charts, whatever you want to call it. But there were more prospects from the state of Georgia at that game than any other state. Um, and so now Kenny Baker with the shard choice, Texas does want to compete in Georgia more. You know, you want to compete in Georgia more and you want to compete in even in Alabama more and Florida even more than you are now. You beat Alabama and Georgia in back-to-back -back years. I mean, there's nothing else you could really do other than winning a national championship from a recruiting standpoint in the Southeast region that would be better. Um, so I, I think I think beating Georgia would be absolutely massive uh, just for your, for your message. Because, you know, you go – when a coach is hired, you have a vision and you sell your vision. And then once – that vision becomes reality, um, it, it's a lot easier sales pitch, right, to get kids on campus. And Texas is now at the point where 
Uh, and I put something out on on Texas football this morning. Texas is now at the point where they're having to tell some kids, you know, now nah, just don't. We're not going to have you in because things may be going really well a different position. I mean, Fahim Delane told me he's not. He's no longer coming in this weekend. That's a day after Major Preston from IMG said. I'm not coming in anymore. I think they're prioritizing some other guys at safety, which means they feel really good about some guys at safety, Texas I'm talking about. So Texas is now at the point where they can get a lot of guys on campus, and they're getting so many – they have the ability to get so many kids on campus, and they're doing so well in recruiting that they can actually make some tough decisions and not waste what we were talking about earlier, kids' time or parents' time. Uh, but I, I think a win over Georgia would at, just increase that ability, Texas – is going to get more kids on campus than they ever have in recruiting, and that gives you thorough evaluation opportunity. All right. And then Ivory Martin, while we're talking about this weekend, he says, well, Sark pushed for commits this weekend. He personally thinks that Ricky commits. Talking about yeah. Look, whether a guy commits privately, silently, or publicly, um, yeah, I, I, I definitely think Texas will walk away feeling very good about a, a handful of guys. Now, whether that comes out publicly or not remains to be seen. And then our last one for today, Jerry, from Gary. And Gary says, hey, Jerry, do you think that the NCAA considers yes. increasing the scholarship numbers due to new college football playoff, adding additional games, injuries, et cetera? Interesting question. Yeah, I, I actually do. I, I think that number, you know, if you're going to go move to a true 16-team playoff, I think that number's got to move to 90. Now, the question is, um, can you really – recruit to that I mean you know that that's the question I mean at some point you know I think Texas is running into it at running back a little bit now I mean Texas got a loaded running back room and you know unless a Jaden Blue has a great year and can go pro they're all coming back next year so you you even get hit blue blood on blue blood recruiting right you can even get hit on that a little bit so if that number were to increase to 90 and I do think if if we head to that 16 team playoff, which is inevitably where this thing's going to go, that keeping that number at 85 is going to be tough. I mean, just go back to what Sark said in that February press conference about having to play more guys, get more guys ready with the rigors of going through a longer schedule. If you're one of those teams that has those expectations and has that ability to play the extra game or two. Um, so now you have two weeks off during the season, which helps, but I would like to see the number move to 90. I probably think it it ascends from 85. I don't know if that can be 87. Is that going to be 88? Is that going to go all the way to 90? I do think in the next five, six, seven years, that number goes up. All right, man. Well, a great show. Very informative. Lots of great questions. We didn't get to get to all of them, but you guys can head on over to ontexasfootball.com for continuous Longhorn coverage. Plus, you can always go over there, jump on the message boards, and, and ask away. Uh, there and get some conversation started but jerry i know like you said you're going to be in the command center here soon but anything that people should be aware of that you need to put out there maybe coming up later today on on football.com or on the on texas football youtube channel yeah no i think uh, it's like cj vogel and i'll have recruiting breakdown we're not going to do that live this week because of some travel stuff but uh We'll have that coming out around lunchtime, I believe, or shortly after lunchtime. And again, we'll go in depth more uh, this April 6th weekend, uh, kind of talk about where some of those recruitments are with guys. That's going to be the main thing today. Obviously, we have Longhorn live stream tonight. Uh, so for, for those that uh, want to hear that, I, I believe Rod Babers and CJ will be on the call there uh, with Aaron Hogan tonight. So uh, we have a full day at On Texas Football YouTube. And .com. I, I posted some uh, recruiting nuggets this morning. Some of the things we talked about, there's a little bit more over there. Hey, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We would definitely appreciate that. And then ring the bell so you're notified anytime that we post a video or that we go live. So that way you don't miss any breaking news. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for the great super chats. We also want to say thank you to Texas Electricity Ratings and Autograph for sponsoring today's show. And, of course, Bobby will be back with us tomorrow morning. So for Jerry Hamilton, I'm Blake Monroe, and we'll see you then.